Here we're going to give a demonstration of a 87 bus differential trip event for our substation that we built for our miniature power grid. This is going to demonstrate how the 87 bus differential is able to detect a fault, what it does when it does detect a fault, and I'll show you how easy it is to do this sort of testing on the system that we built. So to give you a little bit of background, this is the Stevens substation in our power system. We currently have one generator running. The Diablo Miner generator is running and its circuit breaker is closed. So it is ready to feed power to our substation. Currently, looking at our breakers, all five of the breakers are open. They're all tripped. They're all green. They're all off. So that means none of that generator's power can get to this bus. What I'm going to do is introduce a bus fault with this. Simple banana jack style jumper. I'm going to come up here. I'm going to connect any two phases together. This is a, what you might call a bolted fault. It's a hard fault phase to phase on the bus in my substation. Of course, it's safe to do right now. All the breakers are off. I have no power on this bus. Nothing will happen until I close breaker number four, which will at that point connect the Diablo Miner generator with that faulted bus. Now, this is going to be a trip that's picked up, or a fault picked up by our 87 bus differential relay. The purpose of an 87 bus differential current relay is to monitor all the current entering and exiting each phase of that bus. This is a three-phase bus, black, red, blue, black, red, blue, all daisy chained together. So we have current transformers inside each breaker, monitoring the current through A of each breaker, monitoring current through B of each breaker, and monitoring current through C of each breaker. All those CTs are wired in such a way where this relay is going to see if there's any difference, any net difference between currents entering and exiting the bus through each of those phases. So by putting a jumper in here, in this case between A phase and C phase, what's going to happen is I'm going to have current from the A phase of the generator entering the bus, shorting over to C phase, and coming back out. And that current will not be exiting any other point on A phase because all the other breakers are open. In other words, this fault on the bus will be a differential current fault. It's going to see a difference in current between what's entering on A and what should be leaving on A. And as a result, it's going to trip. Now, bus differential relays are very fast acting. Differential current relays in general are fast acting because any difference in current, any measured difference in current between in and out is a bad thing. It means you have a fault. Whereas, let's say an overcurrent relay, like a time overcurrent relay, has a time function where it has to see the current go beyond the pickup value for a certain amount of time before it trips. That is not the case with an 87 bus differential current relay. So we're going to see a very fast trip. This will trip faster than the overcurrent relay on the generator. So all I need to do to see the trip happen is I'm going to close breaker number four. What's going to happen is you'll see the breaker go to the closed state and immediately trip as the protective relay trips it. So here we go. About to close breaker number four and apply power to the fault. So you saw briefly there a red light flash and it went immediately to green. What has happened here, the noise that you heard, is actually this relay. This is the 86 lockout relay. The purpose of the lockout relay is to receive the single trip signal from our 87 bus differential relay. It causes that, that spring-loaded handle to trip over. This has multiple sets of contacts on it and back, which connect to each one of the five uh, circuit breakers. So in the event of a bus fault, we have this wired to trip all five breakers. That's the only way to safely you know, guarantee that we're isolating all power from that faulted bus is we trip all five breakers, so it can't possibly get power from that generator or any other. The way this bus differential relay is hooked up, it can't tell where the power is coming from. And all it can tell is that we have a difference in current between what's coming in and what's coming out of the phase. It doesn't know where. It just knows the fault is somewhere on the bus. And so it trips all five breakers. Even though in this case, the only source of power was through breaker number four, it doesn't know that, so it trips all five. I can reset this, reset the lockout relay, at which point I'll be ready to close that breaker again if I wish. You can see over here on our 87 bus differential, we have some targets that popped up following the uh, fault. It's an instantaneous fault on phases A and C. Now, I should point out a feature here. This is actually not 
an 87 relay from Schweitzer Engineering Labs. This is actually an overcurrent relay that we have adapted to be an 87 relay. Why? Because I can't afford an 87 relay. They're very expensive. They're nice. I'd love to get one. Someday I will have one. Someday it will happen. What we've done right now is we have adapted a 551 model overcurrent relay to be a bus differential. We have configured this to only operate on instantaneous. There is no time function here, so it's very, very fast. And we set it for the lowest threshold possible in the settings of that relay. So in case anyone who knows about SEL products is looking at this quizzically, that's what's going on. We are using an overcurrent relay as a bus differential to demonstrate the concept. So, quick demonstration of a faulted bus on a single bus, five terminal substation, the use of 87 bus differential protection to detect the fault, how it trips the lockout relay, and how that lockout relay subsequently trips all five of the breakers on that single bus.